Hi everyone, and today we're going to do an experiment on paper chromatography. So we want to see if screen methyl orange and methyl orange are pure substances. How will we know if they are pure substances? When analyzed by paper chromatography, they should show only one spot. So let's look at the apparatus and of course the materials again that we'll be using. So the material, of course, is going to be screen methyl orange and methyl orange and the apparatus would be petri dishes, um, capillary tubes, them right here taken out, Oops. and then we have more petri dishes. Over here we have the filter paper and we're going to get rid of the round edges and turn it into our chromatograph, which is an instrument being used to carry out the technique. We have a ruler, a pencil, eraser, scissor, tape, beaker, and water in the wash bottle, which is going to be our mobile phase. So before, this is what we're aiming to make right now, which should be the chromatograph, the instrument. So let's go ahead and show you how to prepare this when you come in the lab. So we have our filter paper and on it we're going to create either a rectangle or a square. So I'm going to create a rectangle because I want my strips to be long. So go ahead and we get our rulers and we draw the rectangle on the filter paper. And of course, right after we're finished drawing our rectangle, then we're going to remove the long edges. I was just checking to see if I'm pleased with what I have drawn here. Not really. Why? Because my paper will look a bit slanted if I don't straighten up right here. Okay, so now I'm pleased. So I'm going to get rid of the round edges now. Just simply take your scissor and start to cut along the lines. The reason we use a pencil and not a pen because if the ink touches water or any other solvent that is soluble in, it's going to run up the paper. And we do not want that. So the pencil has graphite in it and the graphite is insoluble in water. So it will not have any streaking of the paper. So we've cut off the round edges, so now we have the chromatograph. I'm still not pleased with this, so I'm going to make it narrow by just drawing a line down the center and cutting along those lines, or along that line. So I'm going to create two pieces. When we're doing this technique now, the spots that we'll place of the sample, it needs to be placed on the line of origin because you'll have to do a calculation when you're doing these labs. So the line of origin is what we call the baseline and it can be one centimeter from the long edge or it can be 0 0.5 centimeters from the long edge. So I'm going to do one that is one centimeter from the long edge and one that is 0 0.5 centimeters from the long edge of the paper. So this one is 0 0.5 cm and this one is one centimeter. So the M is going to be for methyl orange, which is the orange one. And the screen methyl orange is the green one. I'll spot this one again. All right, so I'm pleased with my spots. So again, just to be clear, because I do not remember what I said earlier when I was creating these marks. So the green one is screen methyl orange and the orange spot is methyl orange. So I'm now going to attach this chromatograph to the petri dish and before I did put a piece of tape there. So I'm going to just simply attach it right now. 
so that it hangs when I cover the beaker with it. Alright, I'm pleased with how it's hanging, so I'm fine. What I'll do now is just add water, which is going to be my solvent, or mobile phase in this case, until the water just touches the tip of the paper. I do not want it to pass in the tip of the paper because of course the spots will run down into the reservoir that I'm creating right now instead of travel of the paper. So I do want the spots traveling up the paper and not running down. Okay, I need to add just a little bit more. Alright, that seems to be it. So the experiment has now started. So you're gonna see what happens to it. Let me move these things out of the way. And clean up my work area. So already I can see that this green metal orange, which was a green spot, is separating. However, the metal orange is not. So I can see which substance is pure and which one is impure so far. But we can only make that determination after the experiment has finished. So we're going to take a break right now and then when the level of the solvent as a watermark on the paper is almost reached the top, then I'll stop the experiment right there. So this chromatogram has developed for quite a while now and uh, you can see that we have the blue and the yellow separating for the screen metal orange and we have one long streak for the metal orange. I'm going to stop it by just simply removing the filter paper from solution. And I do need to mark the solvent front and also I do need to draw a line. Mark the solvent front, so this is where the solvent reaches. And I'm going to circle these streaks because once the paper is wet, it is going to go ahead and continue developing. So I'll just let this dry because we do have to just use a ruler or just estimate the center of each dot right here. Sorry, not each dot but each circle. So let it dry and then we calculate the distance traveled by the solvent and the spots. We'll come back to this in a few minutes. look at the developed chromatogram and you can see why it was important to mark the solvent front and circle the spots so because the paper was wet the different particles are still traveled along with the mobile phase which is why we have the blue above where the line is now so the important thing I need to show you is that with the methyl orange now we do have streaking and the streaks that you're seeing now is, is as a result of the different particles in the metal orange migrating at different rates along the mobile phase of the paper. So that's why we have the streak in there. I did redo the experiment using just one spot, so you can just glance at it and I'll just give you the values afterwards. So let us continue with this chromatogram that we developed. So we need to find the distance from the center of the spot to say the baseline. So what some students are very precise, so they'll look at it and measure say the diameter of the spot and then they divide it by two. We can easily look at it and estimate it once you've done this over well a period of time. So this is equal to 2.567 to 2.7 centimeters. So I can easily write it here and I'll type it on the screen for you. So for the screen metal orange 
we have 2.7 centimeters being traveled by the yellow spot and for the blue spot the center of the spot is here so from there to the line of origin it is equal to 4.4 centimeters now for the metal orange the center of that streak appears to be here so the distance would be what 2.7 2.8 there about so this looks like 2.8 based on where I decided my center of my spot is so this is what 2.8 centimeters all right so that's it for now I'm just going to wait until this fully develops we're almost at the end and I do will give you those values for the second experiment that I ran the second chromatogram has been developed and I've already marked the solvent front and circled the spots I did damage it so you have to be careful because it's still wet and you can see that it's still moving because the paper is wet of course so this is what it looks like and I'm going to go ahead and measure the distance traveled by each spot and put the values at the end of the screen. So that's it for now. Bye-bye.